okay let us solve some more questions based upon rolling motion a solid cylinder of mass m and radius r rolls without slipping down okay an inclined plane of length l and height h what is the speed of its center of mass when the cylinder reaches its bottom okay so this is a straight forward question right so we know v is equal to what square root of 2 gh divided by 1 plus k square by r square okay so velocity of a body when it rolls around an inclined plane it is given by this formula and how much is k for solid cylinder <coughs> for solid cylinder the moment of inertia is mr square divided by 2 right so comparing this with mk square you get k equals to r divided by root 2 okay or k square equals to r square upon 2 so we can put that over here so what do we get we get square root of 2 gh divided by 1 plus k square is equal to what or k square upon r square if you take that r square on this side k square upon r square is 1 by 2 so it is 1 plus 1 by 2 that is 3 by 2 okay and take that 2 in the numerator so it will become 4 right 2 times 2 will uh, become 4 okay so you have v equals to square root of 4 g h divided by 3 or 4 by 3 g h option c is the answer it's very simple right let's move on to next problem a ball rolls without slipping the radius of gyration of the ball about an axis passing through its center of mass is k okay radius of gyration is k if the radius of ball be r then the fraction of total energy associated with its rotational energy will be okay so again this is also a simple question so you know rotational kinetic energy so now they are calling k as radius of gyration so let's call kinetic energy as k okay so k rotational is equal to half of i omega square we know this okay and if you know radius of gyration what is i i is equal to mk square okay so we have half of mk square r omega square okay it is rotational kinetic energy then what is total kinetic energy so we want ratio of this rotational kinetic energy to total kinetic energy so ke rotational plus ke translational right so it is what half of mk square omega square plus half of mv square okay mv square and for a body which is rolling without slipping we know that v is equal to sorry v is equal to r omega right so v square is r square omega square so we can put that over here okay so in place of v square we can put r square omega square and then we can take half of m omega square common and we can cancel it out in these three terms right we can take it common and cancel it out so what is left so it's equal to k square divided by k square plus r square and that is the answer option c is the answer okay so let's see next question and this is conceptual question so i expect answer from you a drum of radius r and mass m rolls down without slipping along an inclined plane of angle theta okay so there is a drum which rolls down an inclined plane the frictional force option a dissipates energy as heat option b decreases the rotational motion option c decreases the rotational and translational motion and option d converts translational energy to rotational energy so without friction you cannot have rolling motion right okay 
so this option is correct okay if there is no friction the body will just slide down okay it will not roll at all there will be no rotational motion okay so option d is correct right very good let's see next question a solid cylinder and a hollow cylinder both of the same mass and same external diameter are released from the same height at the same time on an inclined plane okay a solid cylinder and a hollow cylinder both have same mass same external diameter that means radius is same they are released at the same time okay on an inclined plane both roll down without slipping which one will reach the bottom first this is the question which one will reach the bottom first so tell me okay we know t is equal to what square root of 2 times s divided by acceleration and what is acceleration in rolling motion it is g sin theta divided by 1 plus k square by r square But that one plus k square by r square is in denominator of denominator, so it goes into the numerator, right? So if k is more, time taken will be more. Okay. So what is k for solid cylinder? So k for solid cylinder is r upon root two, and k for hollow cylinder is just r, because moment of inertia of solid cylinder is solid cylinder is mr square by 2 and moment of inertia of hollow cylinder is just mr square right so what is the answer for solid cylinder okay k is r upon root 2 that means k is smaller okay for hollow cylinder k is equal to r okay so solid cylinder will take less time because see okay it depends on k if k is more time taken will be more so k for hollow cylinder okay k for hollow cylinder is greater than k for solid cylinder that means time taken by hollow cylinder will be more than time taken by time taken by solid cylinder so solid cylinder will reach first so a solid cylinder of mass 3 kg is rolling on a horizontal surface with velocity 4 meters per second it collides with a horizontal spring of force force constant 200 newtons per meter the maximum compression produced in this spring will be so see what's happening there is a solid cylinder okay this is a solid cylinder it rolls on horizontal surface okay it rolls on this horizontal surface and there is a spring there is the spring okay which might be connected to some rigid support like this so the cylinder it rolls down and it compresses that spring okay so there is some compression in this spring so till what time that compression will go on when when will it stop compressing when the total kinetic energy total kinetic energy of this uh, cylinder gets converted to what the potential energy of spring right at that point it will stop okay so i can say kinetic energy of the cylinder is equal to potential energy of spring okay so how much is kinetic energy of this rolling cylinder it's half of mv square multiplied by 1 plus k square by r square and potential energy of spring is half of k into x square right this k is this k and this k is different so this small k is spring constant this capital k is it is radius of gyration okay so half and half is cancelled we want x right so we can take k on the other side okay or let's substitute the values so what are the values 
mass is 3 kg okay velocity is 4 meters per second so 3 multiplied by 4 square multiplied by 1 plus k square by r square so it is solid cylinder how much is k for solid cylinder it is 1 by root 2 right so k square upon r square will be 1 upon 2 okay so 1 upon 2 this is equal to k times x square so how much is k k is 200 right 200 times x square so this is 1 plus 1 by 2 3 by 2 okay now right so it is 3 by 2 okay so 3 multiplied by 4 square okay multiplied by you have 3 by 2 and that 200 also we can take it on this side so multiplied by 200 is equal to x square okay so 2 times 2 is 4 so it will cancel out with one of the four of this four square okay so we have three times three square times four okay three square multiplied by two square we can say or okay it is nine times four thirty six multiplied by ten raised to minus two because there is this hundred in denominator okay so this is equal to x square we want x so it is square root of that so it is 6 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 1. Okay, that is 0 0.6 meters. Option B. Then let's see this next question. A small object of uniform density rolls up a curved surface with an initial velocity v. Okay, it reaches up to maximum height of 3v square upon 4g with respect to initial position the object is okay so there is a small object which rolls up curved surface with initial velocity v okay so there will be some rolling kinetic energy so when it reaches the maximum height what will happen the kinetic energy will get converted to potential energy so we can say kinetic energy at start or kinetic energy at bottom is equal to potential energy at top okay so that is half of mv square multiplied by 1 plus k square by r square the similar kind of question only it is equal to mgh right so m and m gets cancelled then it is half of v square multiplied by 1 plus k square by r square. So this is equal to g multiplied by h and they have given that it reaches to this maximum height 3v square divided by 4g. So we can substitute that. So multiplied by 3v square upon 4g. So g and g gets cancelled v square and v square gets cancelled out. Right? So, uh, 3 by 4 is equal to half of 1 plus k square by r square. That means, if we divide this 4 by 2, it's 3 by 2. So, 1 plus k square by r square is equal to 3 by 2. That means, k square upon r square is equal to 3 by 2 minus 1. That's half. Okay. So, k upon r is equal to 1 upon root 2. Or k is equal to we can say r upon root 2 okay so can you guess which is that object can you guess the object is it option d option b okay it's a disc so it's very important to remember moment of inertia right 
So without that, we can't solve questions. Okay, next question. A ratio, sorry, the ratio of accelerations for solid sphere of mass m and radius r rolling down an incline of angle theta without slipping and slipping down the incline without rolling that means sliding down only okay is so when it slides down it's a solid sphere when it just slides down how much is acceleration so for any body which slides down okay acceleration is what g sin theta right acceleration is g sin theta so we want ratio of acceleration uh, rolling down without slipping so we want first rolling down without slipping to slipping down without rolling okay so we want acceleration of rolling the ratio of acceleration of rolling to acceleration of sliding okay so that is g sin theta divided by 1 plus k square by r square and this divided by g sin theta okay g sin theta so g sin theta and g sin theta will get cancelled out okay so what is k square by r square so it's a solid sphere so for a solid sphere k is equal to k is equal to what root 2 by 5 r because moment of inertia is 2 by 5 m r square right so k square by r square is 2 by 5 okay so this is 1 upon 1 plus 2 by 5 or it is you can say it's 1 upon 7 by 5 so take that 5 to the numerator it's 5 is to 7 okay it is 5 is to 7 option a right a disc and a sphere of same radius but different masses roll down on two inclined planes of the same altitude and length which one of two objects gets to the bottom of the plane first okay so this is a repeated question both reach at the same time depends on their masses the disc or the sphere which one right so we know the time taken is equal to what square root of 2 times s divided by acceleration which is g sin theta and divided by 1 plus k square by r square so that goes to numerator okay so if t sorry if k is more t will be more okay so k for disc is what r divided by root 2 and k for sphere is root 2 by 5 root 2 by 5 r okay so which one is more 1 upon root 2 or root 2 by 5 so we can do square and find it out right because we want square only okay so 1 upon 2 so square of this will be what 1 upon 2 okay and square of root 2 by 5 will be 2 by 5 so which one is more and which one is lesser this one is 2 by 4 this one is 2 by 5 so this is smaller right so k for sphere is smaller okay so it will reach earlier option d is the answer a solid sphere is rolling a solid sphere is in rolling motion in rolling motion a body possesses translational kinetic energy kt as well as rotational kinetic energy kr simultaneously the ratio of kt divided by uh, kt plus kr for the sphere is so again this is also simple okay so what is translational kinetic energy so kt is equal to half of mv square or you can say for a body in rolling motion because it is in rolling motion 
it is half of v is equal to what r omega okay so it is half of m multiplied by r square omega square and what is rotation of kinetic energy so it is half of i omega square okay so we want kt divided by kt plus kr rotation of kinetic energy okay so that's equal to half of mr square omega square plus half of mk square omega square <clears throat> okay so we can cancel out this m omega square m omega square and half so what's left r square divided by r square plus k square okay and how much is k so we can take r square common and cancel it out so what do we get so we can take r square common and cancel it out so what will be left here 1 plus k square by r square okay and how much is k for solid sphere it's 2 by 5 right k is equal to 2 by 5 sorry k square will be equal to what 2 by 5 r square because k is equal to root 2 by 5 r okay so we can substitute that so this is 1 upon 1 plus 2 by 5 or it is 1 upon 7 by 5 okay so it is 5 by 7 right 5 by 7 option b is the answer solid cylinder of mass 2 kg and radius 50 cm rolls up an inclined plane of inclination 30 degree the center of mass of cylinder has speed of 4 meters per second the distance traveled by cylinder on inclined surface will be okay so that is a solid cylinder of mass 2 kg and radius 50 cm rolls up an inclined plane okay and question is the distance traveled by cylinder on the inclined surface will be so till what height not till uh, not till the height so what is the distance traveled okay this is the question right so till what point will it go kinetic energy at bottom is equal to potential energy at top right either you can solve it this way or you can solve it this way that final velocity is equal to what final velocity is uh, will be equal to what it is zero so v square equals to u square plus 2 times as right so this is zero u is given okay so u square plus 2 times a what is acceleration so if it is rolling down then acceleration is g sin theta divided by 1 plus k square by r square now it is going up rolling up so acceleration will be negative right so acceleration will be negative so i can put minus sign and this is g sin theta divided by 1 plus k square upon r square multiplied by s and s is what we have to find out right So we can take this on left hand side. So it is 2g sin theta upon 1 plus k square by r square multiplied by s is equal to u square. Okay, and therefore, therefore, s is equal to u square multiplied by 1 plus k square by r square upon 2g sin theta. right so now we have to substitute the values and now we can substitute the values okay so this is equal to how much is u u is 4 meters per second okay 4 square multiplied by 1 plus k square by r square so it's a cylinder how much is radius of gyration 1 upon root 2 times r okay so k square by r square is 1 by 2 so 1 plus 1 by 2 that's 3 by 2 divided by 2 times g is 
and theta is how much? 30 degrees. Okay, so sine of 30, which is 1 by 2, <clears throat> right? So you have 1 by 2 there. So this is equal to 4 square. So uh, this 2 and 1 by 2 gets cancelled. So 4 square is 16. Okay, it's 16 multiplied by 3 by 2 and divided by 10. So you can say, yeah, so divided by 10. So 16 by 2 is 8. 8 3 is 24. 24 divided by 10 is 2.4. Okay, 2.4 meters is the answer. Okay, a disc of radius 2 meter and mass 100 kg rolls on a horizontal floor. Its center of mass has speed of 20 centimeters per second. How much work is needed to stop it? So this is simple. Whatever is its kinetic energy, same amount of work will be needed to stop it. Okay, so work needed is equal to its kinetic energy of rolling motion. So it is half of mv square 1 plus k square by r square. We just have to substitute the values. Okay, so it is half of mass is 2. No, mass is 100. Sorry, sorry. Mass is 100. Radius is 2. And the speed is 20 centimeters per second. So let's convert this to meters per second. Okay, it is 0 0.2 meters per second, right? 20 centimeters per second. So 0 0.2 square multiplied by 1 plus k square by r square. So that is because it's a disk. K is equal to what? R upon root 2. So k square by r square is 1 upon root 2. So 1 plus k square by r square is 3 by 2. Okay. So we have 0 point, 0 0.2 square will be equal to 0 0.04, 0 0.04 multiplied by 100. So that will give you 4. Okay. Multiplied by 3 divided by 2 times 2 is 4. So that 4 and this 4 gets cancelled out. So option is 3. Okay. 3 joules is the required work. Option B. Right? Now, let us see uh, some simple relations. Okay, some simple relations which we just stated and we didn't prove. Okay, so let's see those relations. So, first one of them is work, work done in rotational motion. Let's talk about the work done in rotational motion. So, we will take simple example of one particle only. Okay. And let's suppose there is a, there is this particle at this location. This location. And we exert some force on it. So, this particle is constrained to revolve about some axis. Okay. Let's suppose it is constrained to revolve around this vertical axis, this vertical axis, okay. So it will only revolve around this vertical axis, okay. So we exert some force on it and the force is in this direction. So let's suppose this is the force, okay, this is the force F. So right now the position vector of this particle is this one. Let's call it R bar and it moves a little bit. Okay. It displaces a little bit. Okay. So, its position vector changes and it becomes it becomes this one. So, let's call it R bar at time t. This is suppose R bar at time t plus delta t. So, delta t is the time in which it is rotating, okay, from here to here. So, let us call this angle d theta, very small rotation, 
okay this is very small rotation right okay so now let's call this much displacement of this particle as ds okay so now see this f can be resolved along two components okay sorry so f can be resolved along two components so let's call this component as radial component so suppose this angle is theta so we know this component will be what f cos theta and this component is tangential component this component is tangential component so this one is f sin theta right this component is f sin theta okay so now what is the work done so this object is rotating very small rotation okay ds is the small rotation actually d theta is small rotation about this vertical axis okay so it's rotating like this it's rotating like this in horizontal plane right so for this small rotation we can say work done is work done is equal to what so work done dw is equal to f bar dot ds bar and that is equal to f multiplied by ds multiplied by sin theta okay or f sin theta is the component which is doing the work we can say okay radial component is not doing any work okay because displacement is in tangential direction so after that we know that if this displacement is small okay if this angle is small then this displacement can be written as what or angle can be written as what d theta is equal to ds divided by r okay d theta can be written as what ds divided by r or we can say ds can be written as r multiplied by d theta right so we can substitute that over here okay and substituting that what do we get so ds is r multiplied by d theta so we get f into r d theta sin theta okay and see what we have got so if i rewrite it if i rearrange the terms so it is r into f sin theta d theta so can you guess what is this term is r into f multiplied by sin theta it is magnitude of something torque right very good so isn't it the magnitude of torque okay torque is equal to r bar cross f bar and its magnitude is what r into f multiplied by sin theta so this is tau d theta okay dw the work done is equal to tau d tau multiplied by d theta okay so we got this relation okay so we had written this down by analogy okay so work done in rotational motion is product of what torque and the angular displacement very simple relation after that what will be power so the power is sorry the power is d o sorry not d omega d w by d t okay rate of rate of doing work is power so it's equal to we can say if torque is constant okay if torque is constant we can say it is tau multiplied by d theta by dt and what is d theta by dt so it is equal to what angular velocity 
we get this another relation power is equal to what torque multiplied by angular velocity so this one dw is equal to tau d theta it is analogous to the work done in linear motion which is okay f dot ds right so the analogous quantity of force in rotational motion is tau and analogous quantity of linear displacement is angular displacement okay then the power is tau multiplied by omega so this is analogous to v equals to f into v from linear motion right in linear motion right so analogous quantity of force is tau and analogous quantity of velocity is angular velocity okay so we got the relation for work done and we got one relation for power so is it clear after that where does this work done go where does this work done go in case of rotational motion so if there is one body which is allowed to rotate about a fixed axis only okay it can rotate about this fixed axis only and you are exerting some torque so what will happen when you exert some torque on this body initially if the body is at rest you exert some torque because of that torque it will be set in rotation so the work that you are doing work that the torque is doing gets converted to what the kinetic energy of this body which kinetic energy rotational kinetic energy of the body okay so we can say work done on a body okay sorry work done by external torque external torque on a body okay which is restricted to rotate about a fixed axis body restricted to rotate about a fixed axis about fixed axis gets converted to what gets stored as kinetic energy of the body gets gets converted we can say gets converted to kinetic energy rotational kinetic energy okay rotational kinetic energy of the body fine now what is rotational kinetic energy so rotational kinetic energy is as we know it is half of i multiplied by omega square okay and now if the body is restricted to rotate about a fixed axis only okay it is restricted to rotate about a fixed axis only then the moment of inertia of this body will be constant right the moment of inertia will be constant okay so if i take derivative of kinetic energy with respect to time what do i get what should i get it is rate of doing work right it is rate of doing work okay so rate of doing work is equal to rate of change of kinetic energy with respect to time so this is equal to power okay so this is equal to what power its rate of doing work okay so now let's take derivative of kinetic energy with respect to time so p is equal to dk by dt it's equal to d by dt of half of i omega square and out of i and omega i is constant right out of i and omega i is constant why is it constant because we are restricting that body to move only about a fixed axis okay so distribution of mass of the body about that axis is not changing distribution of mass is constant right 
and therefore since distribution of mass is constant moment of inertia will be constant so you can take it outside you can take it outside so half i can take outside it's just number moment of inertia i can take outside okay so it is d by dt of omega square now this is a variable omega this is different variable okay so how do we take derivative in such a case so what do we do is we make use of chain rule of derivatives right so first we take derivative of omega square with respect to omega then we take derivative of omega with respect to time okay so we can say multiplied and divided by omega okay sorry d omega okay so what is derivative of omega square with respect to omega 2 times omega right it is 2 times omega so you get 2 times omega multiplied by d omega by dt what is d omega by dt it's alpha okay it is alpha so this 2 and 2 gets cancelled out so what do we get we get p equals to i omega multiplied by alpha or i alpha times omega okay so this is my relation number 2 right this is my relation number 2 so check the relation number 1 you got power as tau omega and you got another relation for the power as i alpha omega so if you compare the two relations you get i i'm oh sorry not i tau omega power is equal to tau omega from relation 1 it's equal to i alpha omega then you can cancel out omega so you get what torque is equal to i times alpha okay so you get torque is equal to i times alpha but it is true for the body okay the body is uh, restricted to rotate about fixed axis okay 